Speaking of former National Security Advisor and Fox News contributor, Lieutenant General Keith Kellogg. So here's Ukraine here. And on one side of the map, we've got all this sort of blue-green color. Right. And that's NATO. And then on the other side, we've got Russia. And, and Vladimir Putin is saying to all of this blue, and let's not forget Norway and the United Kingdom as well, don't mess with me because I've got a big nuclear stockpile and we'll respond in lightning quick fashion, weapons that you don't even know we've, we have and we haven't seen them before. These threats in the past have seemed to be hollow. You were concerned about it at the very beginning, mm -hmm. then the, the, the fear went down. Now you say it's coming back up again. Yeah, I, I do, John, and, and thanks for having me. And the reason I'm thinking that is, is the losses on the battlefield. In their strategy, and their military strategy was written by General Gerasimov. Now, remember, Gerasimov is Mark Milley's counterpart. He is their senior general. He's the one who wrote it. And they have a system called non-strategic nuclear weapons. Those are sub-kiloton weapons. Mm -hmm. We in the United States don't have that. We Last time we had a sub-kiloton weapon was 60 years ago. It was Davy Crockett. We got away right. with it. But they're willing to use something like that, maybe a .01 KT. That's 10 tons of explosive. And they may say, well, we can use this as in a demonstration to show them we're serious. They may want to do that because they're going to psychologically prep the battlefield with, with President Biden. President Biden made the comment today, well, look, we're ready for anything. Well, it's not we. It's you, Mr. President, because the only person who can release nuclear weapons is the President of the United States. Article 2, Section 2, Commander-in-Chief. He kind of owns it. But their military philosophy is to do something like that. And if they continue to have losses, I wouldn't be surprised if I saw what I call, in terminology, it's called a demonstration. Well, they put it in the water, they put it in an open field, they say, I'm willing to use it, and then what do we do? Yeah, I mean, that would be a serious brushback pitch, and hopefully one that he doesn't decide to use. Yeah. Let's go to what's going on in the battleville right now, because we know from Izium down towards Slovyansk, there is... Uh, a significant movement of, of the Russian military here. We'll put that in red. And then along the line of contact here, Russia has been pushing westward as well. Uh, the uh, siege of Mariupol continues. Uh, Russia continues to have some problems here in Mykolaiv. But what seems to be happening now, General, is that this whole thing is kind of becoming a slow and grinding yeah. process. How does that change the look of the battlefield? And what does it say about how long this is going to last? Yeah, it's a slog right now. And that's the reason why the heavy weapon is going to be very, very important. They're bringing in what they call the 155 millimeter howitzers. What they should bring in is the MLRS, which they've asked for. We haven't given them to them. It's also why Poland needs to give them those 29 MiGs to have this airline battle. But with the, the fight's going to be somewhere out in, in this region in here because they're not going to close with the enemy. The Russians have now realized they can't win this fight with infantry, and they're lousy right now on combined arms warfare. We thought before they could combine artillery, infantry, armor, and everything they've got together, they won't be able to do it. Yeah. So if the Ukrainians are smart, they're going to stand off and continue, continue to pound them with artillery. Then there seems to be more developments, too, yeah. in dealing with Transnistria right. here, which is a Russian-occupied area of Moldova. Uh, Russia is saying that the ultimate goal is to connect all of this together. Right. Uh, but is there any chance that forces in Transnistria are going to get involved in this fight? They might, but they don't have the combat power to do it. It's going to take a, an effort not only from here to go towards Odessa. Right. It's going to have to come from the sea, and it's going to come they have to come from the from the east as well. Now they were able to hit the, the mm -hmm. uh, Moscow with uh, with, uh, with those anti missiles, missiles yeah. so that's pushed them out about 160 miles. So yeah. that's going to cause a problem. But they're not equipped for this fight right now. Yeah. So I think they're going to hold there. And then the question is, if they go this way, what do the Moldavians do as well? So uh, the, the, would they want to have Odessa? Of course they do, because what, sure. what, what yeah. they want to do is actually close this whole thing off and own it all. Yeah, and cut, cut to Ukraine off from the yeah. Black Sea. Well, keeps getting more and more complex as the days go by. General, great to see you today. Thanks, Thanks John. Thanks, for